For all those who appreciate the work that we're doing here on Standing for Truth, please hit that subscribe button because we are just getting started. So, yeah, here we go. This is going to be fun, guys. You guys are going to like this. So we've reached out to Parsons. He's quite annoyed, and I think he thought we were an evolutionist. I'm not sure, but I'm going to show you it. It's funny. So we reached out to Parsons regarding the critics, and while it wasn't good for the critics, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm going to just show the full response because it is kind of long. I could reiterate it. He's pretty much challenging the full-time bloggers to actually submit their papers <laughs> instead of just complain like people like CRISPR do because he's made sure that the data is 100% solid. Okay, here, let me see. Screen share. Boom. So let me know you can see this. So he's going to sound kind of annoyed in here because I'm pretty sure he just thought I was another evolutionist critiquing his work. Because remember, remember, the evolutionists hate this study because it helps corroborate the biblical creation model. Okay. Salvador makes a good point. He says, determining mitochondrial DNA rates involves accounting for heteroplasmy. Yep. I pointed that out in Erica's debate, I think four or five months ago. They just ignore things. He says, in the somatic line and filtering it out from the germline mutations, not trivial. It's not trivial. It's true. Okay, so if you guys can see this, Thomas Parsons, he says, thank you for reaching out. Look, notice this. He says, I have zero interest in dealing with this redundant argument again. I wasn't going to read it. I was just going to reiterate it, but I figured that the evolutionists wouldn't believe us. So I'm just, I'm just going to go over it, guys. So it's, it, look, look what he says. In the late 1990s and early 2000s, I was bombarded with criticisms for my findings. He says, I showed conclusive evidence for over a decade that my conclusions were valid and that they were wrong. You're CRISPRs of the world. <laughs> he says, I even helped Stone King in his research, even regarding his attack on my work. This isn't a young earth creationist, by the way. Yet all his personal attempts in future studies failed to invalidate my past results. I have only, oh, this is funny. I have only started receiving emails and messages in the past years regarding my mutation rates again. And all of them are in regards to a subject I have no interest in addressing. Probably this subject, because we're constantly showing this paper like, wow, the mitochondrial DNA mutation rate is fast. There's only a, plus there's only a few mutations consistent with our model. Mitochondrial DNA is incredibly similar worldwide, very low variation, proving that we came from a literal and scientific Eve. It's the facts. So in just the last years, probably since we started this channel, you've got your CRISPRs and your Dan's probably bombarding him with criticism. Okay. So this, this is too funny. Let me keep, uh, keep reading. So he says, yet all his personal attempts to future studies failed to invalidate my past results. This is about Stone King who they always bring up. I have actual work to do rather than pander to more useless critics online. Isn't that all we get? Just like with Jensen, how he says, you know, publish your rebuttal in the peer-reviewed research journal. And then they'll say, oh, AIG is not really a peer-reviewed journal. Okay, fine. Write your critique, Dan Dan, the pseudoscience man or Swami Das, and just say that in your critique then. Said, I'm sending in these rebuttals. I don't believe this is actually a reputable journal. Who cares? Just put it, you think you can prove them wrong so bad. Hold yourself accountable. Their excuses are ridiculous. So he says, I've already rendered all the criticisms and arguments they have brought up as useless over a decade ago. So I clearly am not interested in doing it all over again. And now for the next generation, using the same arguments with the evolutionists, they ask the same questions, use the same arguments. You answer them. 
you know, Erica tries to say that standing doesn't answer my questions. I've answered all her questions sufficiently. She hasn't answered mine. But remember, they can't tap out. They got to look good in front of their audience and say they haven't answered the questions. They didn't even try to at attempt to solve the abiogenesis challenge that I've been providing. Okay, this is funny. The critics cannot figure out how to search the archives and find my rebuttals. If they think my work is invalid, then please tell them to go into the field and prove me wrong. CRISPR, go into the field and prove them wrong. Or another thing too, Dr. Sanford's paper on the, the waiting time problem or all of these papers on Mendel's accountant validating genetic entropy published in the secular journals, the mainstream journals. Guess what? There's been no critique of it. There's been no peer-reviewed paper rebutting it. All you're going to get is your bloggers, like your Dan Dan, pseudoscience man, and all these people that hang out in uh, Swami Das's blog all day. They don't have any answers. Because, yeah, they can hide behind their computer and write a blog post all day. But guess what? Those objections they're raising, they ain't going to pass peer review because the science is rock solid. Dr. Sanford made that clear in his interview with uh, James Tour. And Sanford pointed out that the only rebuttals he does get are just from the Internet. You know, these lowlifes that don't understand real science, unfortunately. So here's important, okay? He says, if they think my work is invalid, then please... Tell them to go into the field and prove me wrong. They won't, he says. They haven't. They can't. And I'll tell you why. I cross every T and dotted every I. This is kind of like Jensen. He's crossed every T and dotted every I. That's why the only person to actually hold themselves accountable and take up the challenge was Dr. Stefan Frello, who I debated on Modern Day Debate. Jensen has had the last word on that one. And... Frello, from my understanding, the reason why he hasn't responded to the last round of written debate was because apparently Jensen's last response was too long, too long. It's been a year now, Frello. <laughs> I mean, take as much time as you need. So he's admitted defeat. He says, I knew my results were going to be scrutinized. So I made sure to account for every possible variable at my disposal. But it's really as simple as that. If anyone honestly thinks any part of my work has been a lie or has been overturned, then please submit it. <laughs> this is funny. This means that over the last four decades, because remember, the FBI adopted this mutation rate. The last four decades, we have been convicting the wrong people using my results. My current job, which is, and he names his job, would be taken away instantly, as this would mean that the hundreds of convictions using my mutation rates are invalid. My work would also be unpublished if this were the case, and it is not. It has been decades, and my findings and my research is still the most accurate to date. Once again, Swami Das, CRISPR, all you critics, why don't you get out of the, out of the blogosphere and start actually handing in your peer-reviewed criticisms? This, this is good what he says. No one has come close to the sheer volume of data I have at my disposal. If I ran the numbers today, look at this. If I ran the numbers today, they would be the same as they were in the 90s. So this was a really fascinating response.